Hello and welcome back to Music Repo. I usually post videos and blog posts about home recording studio setup for musicians. However, following my recent video on how to get set up to teach online music lessons through Zoom and how to optimise the settings for streaming music, I've had a lot of contact and questions from fitness instructors who are moving their classes online for the first time. Now, many of the questions you have are about how to sync your instruction and demonstration with your music stream and how to get good quality audio backing for yoga classes and so on. So I have been doing some research to look for some answers to your questions. To get the best audio quality, you do need to invest in a bit of studio hardware as well as understand the audio settings in Zoom. So in this video, I'm going to look at the kind of kit you need to make your online Online fitness classes run smoothly. I'm also posting a link right now to my video on how to get Zoom set up for what I call music mode. You need to adjust the default settings in Zoom so your audio stream isn't choppy. You need to do that whichever kit you buy. Now I'm not a fitness instructor but I have been attending quite a few online fitness classes during this lockdown and to those of you who are providing these classes I want to say a big thank you. It's a really good experience to attend a live workout online because of the connection you feel with both the instructor and the other class attendees. So thanks again. Now getting set up to do this is a bit of a learning curve so I hope this information will help you out. Now, if you do find it helpful, then please give me a thumbs up. That would really help me. And if you want to see more of my studio tips and tricks, don't forget to subscribe. Right, let's go and have a look at a few options. Let's just think about exactly what your goal is. You want to stream your fitness class over the internet. You want the video to look good and the audio to be clear. You almost certainly want the audio to sync with your movement. But video and audio streams are very data intensive. So you need to make sure you do everything you can to optimise your hardware and settings. And remember, you can give this your very best shot, but there will be glitches along the way. However, there are lots of things you can do to minimise the glitches and maximise your live workout experience. So first of all, use the fastest computer you can. You will get the best results and have the most control over your settings if you use a laptop or desktop computer for your live online workouts. And for audio and video data processing, obviously the faster and more up to date, the better. Although you can technically use a mobile device, you'll have much more success with the processing power and hardware connection possibilities that a grown up computer will allow you. Now you need to give yourself the best chance of success. If at all possible, connect your computer to your router with an ethernet cable. You might have to purchase a connector to do this. So for example, my MacBook Pro, I need a Thunderbolt to ethernet adapter. If you've got a more recent MacBook, you might need a different adapter. If you really cannot use a wire, then make sure you position your computer as close to your Wi-Fi router as you can. As I've said before, make sure that you optimise the audio settings in Zoom. Now I've put a link up and below to a separate video I've made where I go through all these adjustments step by step and I've also done a blog post on it, so I'll put a link to that as well. Firstly, I'm going to look at the simplest setup if you just want to play background music in your class, maybe a yoga or Pilates session, for example, where the music adds ambience but does not need to sync to your movements. In that case, the simplest way to do this is to use a feature available in the Zoom desktop client where you can share your music in the background while still running your class. To do this, you simply click on the share screen button, then go to the advanced tab, rather than the default, which is the basic tab. Now, what you can do here is just choose music or computer sound only, and then hit the share button. Okay, so you're now sharing computer sound, and then it's just a case of playing back your music in whatever software you want to use. You set the music going and you're still able to speak over the top of that. Now, I'll just mention here, you should be aware of any copyright issues before you do this. The music I'm sharing here is a track that I am allowed to share from a library I have subscribed to. Now, it's possible to use your computer's built-in microphone. However, you will get a much better sound quality from your voice if you use a decent external microphone. At the moment, I'm speaking to you using my USB microphone. A USB mic is a really cost-effective and easy-to-use purchase for this purpose. So I'm just going to pause and switch to my internal mic on my computer so you can hear the difference. 
Now I'm using my internal microphone, so you can hear me over that. It works, but you get a much clearer and more professional sound with the external mic. So let me just switch back. Okay, so I'm back on the USB mic. Now to summarize, this is a simple way of sharing music in the background of your class. With the purchase of an external microphone, you can make a good quality sound. And I'll share a link below to a post where I've compared lots of different USB microphones at various price points. You can watch video reviews of them, listen to them, and see which one you think might be best for your budget really. I'd recommend that you choose a mic with an Omni pickup pattern available. Some mics have switchable pickup patterns, some are just an Omni mic in the first place. An Omni mic picks up sound from around the room so as you're speaking and moving it will pick up your sound better than if you use a much more directional mic. The Blue Yeti mic is a good option because it has a switchable pickup pattern so you can experiment with it and find the one that is best for you. However, this method and I'll just stop the music now. Okay, I can easily stop sharing the music here by going stop share. Okay, and so we're back to our normal meeting without the music. So this method is not going to work if you need to sync your music and movement. You will get a time lag between the music and your voice. So let's move on and look at some of the ideal studio gear you could get and set up if you need a setup where you sync music and movement. Okay, so if you were going to buy a set of equipment from scratch, then this would probably be your ideal setup as a kind of balance between really good functionality and cost effectiveness. Let's go through each component because it looks a little bit complicated with it all on the screen like so. So the main component is going to be a wireless headset. This is probably the best way to project your voice for an online fitness class. A wireless headset specifically designed for a fitness class will be waterproof. It will stay very well on your head as you're moving around to present your class and it will have a small pack to transmit the sound. Buy one that is specifically designed for fitness classes. The way it works is the head, you wear the headset and you have a little pack that transmits the sound to a base like this one. The next component you'll need is some kind of media player or a mobile phone that will play back the music just as you probably do now when you are giving a class. And so that's the second component. And the third component is a little mixing desk like this. Now this is a USB mixer. So once you have these three components, you don't need any other equipment other than the cables. Now this is a nice, neat little mixer, just has one microphone input and line inputs. And the way it works is that you will connect the base of the wireless headset to the microphone input via an XLR lead. And then you will buy the appropriate cable to make a connection from your phone into the line inputs on the mixing desk and that way you can then play with the faders and play with the signals until you've got a good balance between your voice and the music. Now all you then need to do is connect the mixer up to your computer using USB. It's then a simple matter to choose the USB mixer as your microphone in Zoom and then it will work very efficiently as long as you have done the advanced settings that I've shown you in a separate video to make sure the audio isn't going to be choppy. And the final thing you will need is some kind of external speaker to take the sound out of the mixer to the speaker so that you can hear it because otherwise you won't be able to hear the music and it's very important that you obviously do. And so this is one complete package that will allow you to present your fitness classes synced to your movement and working very efficiently with Zoom. This is another setup that would work equally well. It's slightly more complicated, but this might suit you better if you already have some of the components in this system. The first two components are the same. You have your wireless headset and you have your media player or phone for the music. So. Voice goes into the wireless headset, music comes from your media player or phone, and you connect the two to an analog mixer. Many fitness instructors already have a bit of a setup like this where they take their music and their microphone to the gyms that they are teaching in. And so it could be that you already own some equipment like this and you're familiar with using it. And this is how you mix your audio and voice anyway. Now the difference is this mixing desk is not 
a USB mixer. So it is an analog mixer, which means that you can't connect it straight up to your computer. You have to have another component and the component you need is an audio interface. So you need some kind of interface, and this is just one example, and I'll put a link below to a whole blog post on what is an audio interface and how do you choose the best one for you. They come in all shapes and sizes and all price points, but basically you need to take the signal from the mixer to an audio interface, which can then connect up to your computer, just like the USB mixer before but it's an extra step that you need. This will be a more expensive setup because obviously you've got an extra component in there with the interface as well as the mixing desk and the mic and the media player. Finally, you'll still need some kind of speaker to play back the music. You can either take the output from the mixer or you could even take the output from the interface so that you can hear the music as you're giving the class. In exactly the same way as we selected the USB mixer before in Zoom, this time you would select the audio interface as the microphone and then it would transmit the sound from the mixer, i.e. your voice and your music mixed together with the levels all correct straight into Zoom and you'd also be hearing it through the speaker. Now, if all the other options seem a bit complicated or expensive, here is something else you could try. You've probably already tried putting a speaker next to your microphone on your computer and using the internal microphone to say the instructions as well. And if you've done that, you will find that it actually does work. It's just the quality of the sound isn't very good. You could significantly improve that by using a USB microphone, which you would connect to your computer, and then you could play music from a speaker and speak, and the microphone would pick up both the music and the voice, and it would be pretty good quality. We talked a bit about a USB microphone before when we were looking at using it for yoga classes if you were using the background music in Zoom. This is a very similar setup, it's just that you would be using the microphone to pick up the sound from your speaker as well. So that is quite a simple, cost-effective option if all the other stuff seems just too complicated or too expensive. I do appreciate that this is quite complicated. Getting the right equipment to work efficiently is a bit of a learning curve. So I have written a complete blog post on this topic with links to all the equipment I've talked about here, a little bit more detail about some of the things you need to do to get yourself set up to do these online fitness classes. I also talk a little bit about improving the quality of your video. Now I'm not going to go in a lot of detail here, but once you've got the sound sorted out, you may want to upgrade your webcam or invest in a video capture device so you can use a digital SLR camera or a other kind of camera that you own and also you might want to think about lighting but probably getting the sound right in the first place is a good place to start and remember it is going to take a lot of trial and error but you can do this you can get there step by step start with the sound get that right and then have a look at upgrading your equipment and good luck well, I hope I've covered everything you need to know to get going. Remember, questions, comments, suggestions, post them below. Please like and share the video if you've enjoyed it. And remember, I post videos on a home recording studio setup and music making with technology, particularly aimed at beginners and people who are just learning. So do subscribe and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.